Greetings, fellow Kerbonauts. Welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. My name is Rice. I am a KSP minimalist, and this is the Ion Lander Challenge Hard Mode. So this was an in-house challenge between my friends and I, where they issued me the challenge of landing an Ion engine-powered lander onto Minmus. And while it sounded simple enough, they gave me the extra option to score some additional imaginary internet points by including the hard mode option, which meant that I would use no more than two solar panels on my lander. However, I believe I've won some additional extra internet points by using only one solar panel on this lander. As you can see by the solitary lone solar panel perched precariously on the top of this rocket. And frankly, uh, by the way I've designed this vehicle, you really don't need that solar panel anyways. Um, actually, you can make this ion-powered lander work, believe it or not, by using a single radial thermal generator. Now here are some quick stats to our robotic lander. With 16 parts, it weighs a paltry 1.78 tons without the descent module. And with the descent module, there are 53 parts weighing in at 7.726 tons. Now remember, ion engines are designed for interstellar travel through the vacuum of space, and they're not really intended uh, for landing on celestial bodies, which pretty much makes this challenge all the more fun. Now at some point, many, many of us have attempted to try to build our own ion-powered landers, and while it sounds good on paper and in idea, in practice, most of the time, it's a pretty miserable failure. Um, and the main reason being is because most of us often underestimate the terrible thrust-to-weight ratio that ion engines have. Like, take this vehicle, for example. The amount of thrust that this uh, vehicle can generate with the descent module is about 7.5 meganewtons. What that translates to is a thrust-to-weight ratio of about 0 0.99. <laughs> and keep in mind, that's a thrust-to-weight ratio on Minmus. And so this thing can't even lift its own weight off the ground on Minmus. However, once the descent module detaches, the thrust weight ratio pretty much um, drastically changes and it goes to 1.43, so it's fairly respectable. Now the rules to the challenge are that we're allowed to use liquid engines only for lifting the vehicle out of Kerbin's atmosphere and bringing them to Minmus. And additionally, we can only use them to park our vehicle in orbit. Other than that, um, everything from orbit to landing must be done with those ion engines. <laughs> so there's no cheating it. You can't use liquid engines to say, pull your vehicle out of orbit and then detach those liquid engines just to have your ion lander land the last 20 feet um, onto the surface. We can't do that. <laughs> uh, believe me, I've asked. As a matter of fact, I've brought so much fuel with me um, that as soon as I managed to park myself around Minmus, I realized that I still have a whole other stage of liquid fuel that I had not used. And so, uh, there we are. <laughs> Just detaching that perfectly good poodle engine and sending it off into the cosmos even though it was never used. Um, now that we've entered uh, into the day side of Minmus, it's time for us to land. Now the trick to uh, ion landers is that when you park yourself in orbit around a celestial body, you want to bring yourself to the lowest orbit possible. Um, ion engines run out of gas really fast and you can't afford to lose all your fuel. Even though it's regenerative, um, you can't afford to lose all your battery power. Uh, which is what I mean by fuel, of course. Um, you can't afford to run out of fuel when you are, say, 5,000 meters uh, above the surface. In this case, uh, I parked my orbit at about 8 kilometers, and we begin our gradual descent. Now, if you build an ion lander with enough solar panels, you really don't need uh, a whole lot of battery power. 
um, in that you can land on the day side of a planet and use all the regenerative power from your solar panels to keep your engines going. However, that's not uh, how you do things with hard mode, because obviously with uh, only two solar panels, and in this case, just one solar panels, you can't rely on uh, regenerating your battery power um, to land. So, how would you do this? Well, in my case, um, I treat uh, these ion engines as if they were like any other regular engine, in that we have fuel tanks supplying fuel to the engines, and in this case, the fuel tanks are the batteries, um, along with those uh, xenon tanks as well. And we charge those batteries all the way up to full. In this case, um, the descent part of this ion lander has about 36,000 units of battery power, which is about enough to uh, slow us down to a respectable speed. Now, um, I say decent module quite a bit, and what I mean by that uh, is that this lander actually is two parts. It's a two-part lander. And one thing I realized uh, when I decided to do hard mode uh, was that it's next to impossible to bring enough battery power with you to land the entire vehicle down as one single unit. Um, in this case, uh, you have, you almost always have to use a two-stage lander, especially if you're just using one solar panel or no solar panels at all. So the bottom stage is composed of 36,000 units worth of battery power um, and about, let's see, 7, 9, 11. Um, there's close to 4 plus 8, 12. 12 plus 1, 13, 13 plus 2, so there is actually 15, <laughs> doing a little bit of math there, there's 15 ion engines on the descent stage there, and all of them are running at full blast, and just look at that battery power just draining away um, as we attempt to land our module down. Now, the descent module, of course, is not going to take us all the way down to the surface of Midmus, especially with that thrust to weight ratio of 0.9. That's the other downside uh, to having a battery powered fueled vehicle is it doesn't necessarily lose weight <laughs> the longer you run it. Unlike liquid fuel engines, when you use up fuel um, and the tanks steadily drain, the tanks become lighter, your craft becomes lighter, and becomes a little easier to handle. Um, not so much here. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drain all the battery power, uh, which is 36,000 units, and we're going to drain it until it's just about dry, and then we'll jettison it, and then we'll switch over to our main lander to do the final landing. Now, <laughs> uh, about here I start to realize um, I don't think I'm going to be landing on flat ground. Looks like I'm going to be hitting the side of a mountain. So here I'm, I'm going to have to improvise a little bit uh, on the landing. But um, looks like the descent module is doing its job pretty well. Uh, we are down to about 30 meters per second and we still got pretty good battery power. So we're coming down nice and steady, and there I am just, we're cutting the engines a little bit and then throttling it up. So we're kind of feathering it a little bit when it seems kind of funny feathering ion engines, <laughs> but uh, um, I decide to uh, bring it down now and then in order to give a little bit of regeneration um, to those battery packs. Uh, now, unfortunately it's, it's a little bit in vain because that single solar panel isn't going to regenerate us a whole lot. And that's one of the, uh, that's one of the curious aspects of, I found of running a lander like this is because a lot of the, I, I still have my old habit with ion landers of trying to rely on power regeneration to do my thing. And this doesn't rely on power regeneration. It just relies on the power you bring with you. Um, and then ejecting, like we saw just now, um, any empty batteries that you have. And so there we are. We are now on our primary lander. And we drop our landing gears. And we managed to um, kill all of our lateral velocity, which is perfect. So now we're just going straight down. Um, and there I am. We're keeping an eye on the, on the descent module. Because what... 
a neat thing to do to judge your radar altitude to the ground um, is um, checking your debris when it impacts the ground. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> Um, this isn't a manned vehicle, and in manned vehicles, I'll check the radar altimeter on the inside of the cockpit. Um, unfortunately, that's not the case here. And looks like the, it exploded um, just uh, within a kilometer, so we still got a little bit of distance here. Now it's about here I get a little bit worried, um, because I'm worried that uh, I might kill all of my velocity before I hit the ground. And for a vehicle with such uh, limited battery power, um, that's really something that you gotta be pretty tactical about um, as you're descending. Um, unlike regular liquid engines where you can just hit the gas pedal and just stop on a dime. <laughs> uh, ion engines are a little bit more fickle than that and they take a little bit more work um, to slow down. Uh, as you can see, even on full throttle, um, slowing down does take a little bit of effort there. But um, we are start we can see all the terrain scatter now and also we're starting to catch the lights from our um, uh, landing lights. So uh, we are pretty close. Um, and looks like we are down to about one-third battery power, so hopefully we've got enough left to uh, make this landing, and <laughs> yep, my guess was right. This is definitely not flat land, so we're going to be landing right on the side of this mountain, so hopefully it doesn't get uh, too bad there. Um, especially, uh, I, I always worry, especially when I have... Uh, giant pieces sticking out of a lander i.e. that solar panel because I'm always afraid I might brush it up against something and break it um, so hopefully that doesn't become too much of an issue and uh, unfortunately this lander really isn't all that maneuverable because all the more all the maneuverability is coming from the reaction wheel inside of that really tiny probe so we're looking at like a torque uh, capability of about 0 0.5 so there's not a whole lot of room to make those sudden course corrections but here we go, let's touch this landing ever so slightly. Not enough time to get off the mountain. We have to land right now. Come on, little buddy, you can do it. Bring it down just slightly and perfect. There we are. <laughs> A perfect pinpoint mountainside landing. And now we start our steady slide, um, mountain slide descent into hopefully more flat area. So what we're going to do here is we're gonna speed up time about uh, five times speed while we make our uh, skid <laughs> down to the bottom of the mountain. So, you know, Minmus, Ice Planet. So I imagine there's uh, quite a bit of snow or ice here. So we're probably, so um, we've converted our landing probe into a skiing probe of sorts. <laughs> And just look at us jetting along. Now, for a planet with such little gravity, um, I was pretty amazed at uh, how fast we were going for a probe that's uh, just shy of two tons. Um, but uh, then again, we were riding a pretty good slope, so... <laughs> um, so let's wait this out here and we're slowing down now. So we're coming down to the bottom of the mountain. Oh, at some point we're gonna, we're going to stop. And so what we're aiming for right now is for the ice lake um, uh, right out there on the edge. Um, that way we can get onto some level terrain. So what we're gonna do from here is we're going to charge up our batteries and then we're going to make our jump. <laughs> now, unfortunately, we don't have enough battery power to go back into orbit. It takes a whole lot more battery power than just the 4,000 units we have. And as a matter of fact, we have just enough battery power to make short little grasshopper hops um, to the uh, destination that we're going. So um, as you can see, I pitch a little bit forward and we stop. And then we recharge the batteries, and then we jump again. <laughs> Here we go. And steering this thing is a little bit of a challenge, too. That uh, 0 0.5 torque off of that really tiny, tiny um, probe makes things a little bit more challenging. But nonetheless, it, it is pretty fun. 
Um, and so here we go, uh, not risking draining my batteries completely dry because that would be really detrimental if I were to drain my battery. Oh boy, here we go. Let's let's get everything back up. There we go. <laughs> oh, that was really close. And back down on the ground again. And during those situations, um, normally when I start uh, toppling end over end, I don't normally look at the screen. And it's usually a good idea because if you start looking at the screen and you start to see your uh, vehicle start to topple over, uh, first instinct might be to panic and you might end up hitting the keys uh, that you did not intentionally meant mean to hit. This As a matter of fact, the entire time that I was jumping this, uh, doing my grasshopper hops, um, I kept my eye, eye on the nav ball and just watching that retrograde marker. Um, a lot of the times, just keeping your eye on the instruments um, is just enough to keep your cool, um, especially when you start encountering little emergency moments like that. <laughs> like that previous moment where I almost slammed into the ground and destroyed my solar panel. Okay, and we are almost there. So it looks like it's going to probably take about maybe two or three more hops for us to reach the ice lake. And we got our batteries recharged again. Let's give it another go. Here we go. And yeah, it looks like we're going to have to do one more hop after this. And so let's stop the lateral velocity and land. There we are. Actually, it looks like we made it. Oh, would you look at that? So we are just on the edge. Um, so looks like we didn't make it. We're just about there. Let's give it another jump. And uh, as you saw, a little glimpse is that right above us was our debris uh, from our unused fuel tanks uh, that we had from that stage with the poodle engine. <laughs> well, so much for uh, Kessler syndrome. I guess we're going to leave some debris around Minmus. And there we are. We have landed. So that concludes our challenge, mission complete. I'd like to thank you all for hanging around. Uh, this episode has been minimalist approved. And fellow Kerbinauts, we will see you next time.